All right, so tonight we are going to look at key features of square root functions. So we're going to be looking at things like domain and range, x and y intercepts, things like that. So let's take a look at, first of all, this function right here. You may want to stop the video right now. I'll write this all down. Hopefully you uh, took my advice and went to Walmart and got yourself some graph paper. If not, you'll have to make it by hand, no problem. So notice right off the bat, I started off with my parent table, which remember I asked you to memorize, and my parent graph. So let's first of all write down the parameter changes and let's graph this. So first of all, we have a uh, translated one unit to the left. Notice the plus one is inside the grouping symbol. Uh, the grouping symbol in this case is a square root, which is a type of radical. And then we have translated two units down. So just knowing this, we could go straight to our graph. It says one unit to the left and two units down. So from our starting point, one unit to the left and two units down. So that would be our new starting point. Now notice there's no stretches, compressions, reflections involved here. So once we've done this, these two translations, we could just go ahead and follow this pattern starting from here as our new starting point. So we would, this would be our new zero, zero. Then one, one, four, two, and nine, three. Whoops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. <clears throat> and just for those for you to see how we change the table here x is being affected remember so we're going to do the opposite so we would subtract one and then here this is your k this is your h this is your k so y is going to decrease by 2. So <clears throat> that's going to be negative 1, 0, 3, 8. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. So let's see if it matches. Negative 1, negative 2. 0, negative 1. 3, 0, 8, 1. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and write the domain and the range. Now let's start off with the domain. Remember, domain is left to right. So our furthest left point is negative 1 on the x-axis. This is your furthest left point on the graph, negative 1. I'm going to write it using some different notations. Let's start with inequality notation. Just as a little review, inequality. So it's a closed dot, so we're going to have a less than or equal to x. And notice the furthest right is an arrow. So that's going to infinity. And infinity never gets an equal. Okay, interval notation. We put our left first, comma, then our right. Close dot gets a bracket. Open dot or arrow gets a parenthesis. And then there's set notation. That's where we write x is an element of all real numbers such that 
And then we could either write this inequality here, or we could just say x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And we'll put it in brackets or braces. Now, sometimes you'll see the domain for a square root function just simply written like this. with the assumption that x is all real numbers. Okay, let's take a look at the range next. So for the range, remember range goes from lowest to highest. So on the low end, we're going through negative 2, this dot, this point, negative 2. And on the high end, again, the arrow, so through infinity, so inequality, interval, oopsie, I knew I was going to do that, and there's set notation. And again, sometimes you may see it just written simply like that. So those are two key features. Next, let's take a look at the x and the y-intercept. So the x-intercept, we can easily see that here at 3, 0. Or we could look in the table and find the x-intercept here, y-intercept, that's where it crosses the y-axis, and here it's going to cross the y-axis at 0, negative 1. Again, you can tell where it is right here on the graph, or you can look in the table and you can see the y-intercept right here. y-intercept, x-intercept. Okay, well I hope you're having a good evening and I'll see you guys tomorrow.